Oh yeah, pleasant good day everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Burke, and this is going to be the NHL offseason report. Would you look at some of the prospects and the free agents for the Carolina Hurricanes as they look to continue to build on and build better and get that destined Stanley Cup with Rob Rindamore, one of the best coaches in the league, at the helm, and Don Waddle, a very solid general manager as well. They do not have a first round pick in this year's draft, but there are some potential pretty good defensemen to add to the defense and defensive forwards that will potentially be there as they have their second round pick that they can add that fit well into Rob Brindamore's system. When it comes to RFAs though, they do have Laurent and Nikas. I would say Marty Nikas is the guy that they would probably prioritize over him and Steven Laurent. Laurent is a very good bottom six player though and I would say if you can sign him, might as well just get him for 1-5 to 1-8-9 or something like that if you're able to sign him because he is a very good bottom sixer so you might as well try to keep him there. But maybe they won't because Jack Drury is developing. Kakaniemi continues to develop and you're going to move him up a level. So it's not like you need the wrench. But he is a good player if you can keep him on the cheap. And if he's not staying there, he's going to go to a team that definitely, like maybe even Daryl Sutter's Calgary Flames, you fit very well into there. A big guy that plays pretty good on both ends. So he's definitely going to have a home. But Jacob Slavin's obviously a good defensive team to build around. Tony D'Angelo is an RFA. Are they going to be able to pay him, though? Are they going to be able to get bang for their buck and have that work out for, well for them in trade? That's something that remains to be seen. I'm in the camp of if he wants many years, many money, trade him. If he wants, like, three years and a good bit of money, you might want to take that risk. But if he wants, like, seven years and a boatload, you got to trade him because that's too much of a risk for Tony D'Angelo. Uh, Brady Shea... 2024, Brett Pesce, they're both expiring the same year. Both have very good cap hits in terms of a very friendly contract of 525 for Shea and then 4025 for Pesce. Um, Lil Joy is obviously just a filling guy, so is Chatfield. But the biggest thing that obviously did this team in this year was Frederick Anderson going down at the worst time possible. Nancy Ranta did step up. And then they have a very good kid, obviously, in Kachekov, who's trying to fight everybody in the playoffs. And Jack LaFontaine, who, given time, probably could develop into something. Makanyemi is also pretty good, as is Beck Warm. But if we really want to go to the cream of the crop in their goaltending, they um, have also Nikita Kwap, who was very good in all the internet, not all, but most of his international play with Germany. Uh, Patrick Harmla. Uh, who was in uh, the 2021, the good Czech goaltender. And then Jay Kurczynski, uh, who's a very good American goaltender. So they, they have a very good prospect pool of goaltenders, a full and plentiful at net. And that's something that Rob Burnham were builds on. They're also full and plentiful on defensive prospects, with Scott Morrow being probably the best. Uh, and then Nikitschen uh, being most likely the second best. You also have Honker, Fensor, Weber, Inamoto, uh, the very good American kid that probably could play in the NHL next season, so I wouldn't be surprised if he potentially gets some playing time. He started to enter those middle prime years, and Cade Weber also isn't too far away, so to speak, either. And then also, Dominic, um, if you're able to have certain guys come back, like the Dominic Balks, obviously, Billy Koivinen, uh, he's a guy that they drafted last year at 51. He's looked very good when playing for Finland as well in tournaments, and T. Uh, Tik Sola, I always mispronounce his name. He's looked good as well while overseas. And then Passion's a small kid, which is why he dropped. But I remember every scouting film you would read on that, everything you would see on him uh, was all about just the size dropped him, nothing else. He has all the skill in the world, so it's going to be very fun to watch Alexander Passion develop and probably be a beast, honestly, in the league. And then they also have very good depth defensemen like the Caban Fitzgeralds, that especially in Britain, where the system can be successful for a few games. Just like you've seen guys like uh, Brendan Smith, who added one of his most successful seasons in years, be able to do. And I would keep him on the cheap if I'm them. You might as well keep him on the cheap. If you want to keep being Cole on the cheap, do that as well. But they got the biggest thing with this team is, as I went through the prospects first, usually I did that reverses. They have a lot of UFAs they got to look for. Paul Dorowski, CJ Smith, the small men's, the Maletics. Those are easy resigns for your minor league team and potentially get some NHL playing time. And so kind of is Josh Lievo, unless if a team like Arizona wants to give him a chance to play in the NHL, then he'll go there. Stefan, you're most likely going to let walk, but he is a guy from what you um, 
that seems to be obviously is that a lot of leadership thing. I think that's the way to put it. it. Has a lot, a lot of ease in his career. So obviously, seems to be a very good locker room guys. Maybe we keep him for that. Don't me. I think just because of pay, they're going to let go. They're obviously going to try to sign Nita Ryder or Trocheck. I think those are going to be their top priority guys. They do have more depth at center, so I wouldn't be surprised because I think they got Kakaniemi more for the future to move him up. He'll be the two C. And then Jordan Stahl will be the 3C. And then Jack Drury, the kid, could be the 4C. So I would not be too shocked if they honestly prioritize. I'm going with the winger, Nita Ryder, or just because they have the very good young talent. And they like the fact that Domi can play both. Maybe they just re-sign Domi, save money, and even get better on defense. I wouldn't think they would be opposed to doing that either. So, like, a la Chris Letang, if they're somehow able to do that. Imagine Carolina with him. But... It's been a quick video on the Carolina Hurricanes. If you look at their offseason, some of their top prospects, some of their plentiful UFAs, Fetchy Niederreiter and Trocek, and then even Ian Coles of the world and the Brendan Smiths, I would kind of lock them up just because of how well they played for you. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Or above from the Easy Jews widget. You can try to grow into the goal of 260 and more by the start of July.